Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 3, Lesson 8, More Array Algorithms, Exercise Number 3. Let's see what we have to do today. In states.java, we're going to write a method get max to find and return the largest value in a data array. We're going to write the method get min to find and return the smallest value in the data array. Then in my console, we're going to print the results of a call get max on the my states object, and then print the results of a call to get min on the my states object. Print off should look something like this. Let's take a look at our code. We're instantiating a new object, my file reader. It is taking one parameter, states names. We're creating a new array states names. It is the my file reader calling the get string data method. And that looks a lot like what we did in the last lesson. The my file reader object is calling the set file, passing along population text. Then we're creating another array population. It is getting the my file reader object to call get in data, and 50 is the parameter. Finally, we're instantiating another new object, my states. It is from the states class, passing two parameters, our two arrays that we created. This code looks a lot like what we did in the last lesson. We have our file reader class. This looks a lot like the file reader class we've been using in our previous lessons, nothing new here. So this looks like it's looking through both string and int data. And these are our methods in order to look through them. In states, we have two private instance variables, states, names, and datas. We have one constructor. We have one method print pairs. And again, this looks like from the last lesson that looked through and compared the data at the index to the one next to it. And if one was larger than the other, it would return true or false based off the numbers. It uses this compare values method. Compare values is right here. This just compares the first value to the second. True if the first is greater than the second, false if not. We have get max, looks like what we have to do for number one. Get min, what we have to do for number two. State names, this looks like all the state names. Population, all that is the population of all the states. Let's head over to states.java. So we have to write a method get max to find and return the largest value in the data array. We're basically going to create a for loop that is going to look through our data. And if one at the index is bigger than the other one, then we're going to return that one. Sounds pretty simple. Let's start writing it. First thing I need to determine what I want to return. And ultimately, we're returning the max value. I'm going to create a variable. It's going to be an int because we're just doing single numbers. There's no doubles. I'm going to call it max. And what am I going to set this equal to? Well, ultimately, I'm looking through the data array that is created up here. That means I would initially set my value not to zero, because that's not going to make much sense. I want to send it to data at the index of zero. That's my starting point. Now, if I am setting max is what I want to return, I'm going to change zero to max because that's what the end value I want to be. Now I have to do my for loop. We're going to go for parentheses or curly braces. What are we going to do on the inside? Well, this one, we're not going to use an enhanced for loop. We're going to use our regular one. So I'm going to do int index equal zero. And as long as the index is less than the data dot length, and since I set it at zero, we're going to go minus one, and then we're going to go index plus plus. Well, what do we want to test for in here? If one is bigger than the other. And if we're using the word if, we'll probably need an if statement. So put some curly cues, start keeping track of these. This is if, and this is for. What do we want to happen in our if statement? Well, I want to know whatever index I'm at, is that bigger than the maximum index we've already found? And I can just compare that. 
let's just say the data at whatever index is that bigger than the max. And if it is, then max is going to become whatever data we're at at that index. Well, that's simple. Clean up the code a little. Get a little four there. Well, that's how we do the max. I'm pretty sure the min is going to be almost exactly the same, except we're going to use a reverse alligator instead of larger. We just want a smaller number. Let's go down here and write this out. I know doing before testing isn't good, kids. I'm fairly confident in my coding, just not my spelling. <laughs> We're going to start off with another int. This one's going to be min, and it is going to be equal to whatever data we're at at that index. We're going to start off at zero. And if we are setting our min as we want returned, we have to tell Java we want the min returned. Now, just like before, we need a for statement and we need some curly cues. It's going to be four. Inside my for statement, I want to look through my loop. So I need int index equal to zero as long as index is less than the data dot length. And then we're going to do minus one since we set our index at zero. We're going to do index plus plus inside here. If that number at the index is less than our current min, then we just want to make that number our new min. So if we'll do some parentheses, some curly cues, this is our if inside here, if data at whatever index we're at is a less than the minimum number, we just want min to equal the data at that index. Clean up our code here a little. That looks pretty good to me, kids. I think we should head back to my console and print the results and see if we're right. Let's go to my console. We're going to go down here and print the results of get max and get min. How do we do that? We need a print statement. So system.out.println. What do we want inside there? Our little text looks like it says largest population. And then we have a little space. Oh, we need some quotes because it is a text. And then we're going to concatenate. And what do we want to call? Well, it's definitely in the my states object, right? And then what method did we just write? The get max method. So we just want to call get max. Almost the same identical thing for the min. System.out.println. This time we'll remember our quotes smallest population and then we'll concatenate what object are we working with my states this time we want to get min now when i hit run i should get this number to print off and this number to print off with my statements well let's see if we're right kids hmm our minimum was off. Let's take a look at our state's population. Let's see what's last. Looks like we missed the last one. I think if we go back to states, I don't think we need this minus one in there. Let's get rid of the min in the max. I don't think we need that because we're starting off at zero. Let's go ahead and hit run and see if we get the right data for Wyoming. And there you go. We have the right data now. So remember, wherever you start in the index at, that's dependent on if we're doing minus one or not. Since I started at zero, I didn't need it. 
because our index started at zero, went all the way up. And if you look at our population, it starts at one. So we got all the way through. Key takeaway from this lesson, kids, is really understanding these get min and max algorithms. If you listen to one thing I say here, listen to this. On one of your FRQs, you're going to have to get the minimum or maximum of some value. Understand first, we need to create a variable to return. We use a for loop to look through our information. We use an if statement to compare one data against the other. And then if that statement is true, we set whatever returning to that new value. And this really is one of the foundational skills in computer science, finding the minimum number or maximum number in a data set. We always wanna know what the outliers are. And hopefully kids, this video helped you understand a little bit about how to use those array algorithms. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later kids, bye, bye, bye.